This episode of Fine Scale Modelers New Product Rundown features Broncos M19A1 Gun Carriage, Azure Fram's Renard R31, Tacom's M60A1, and Zvezda's A50. New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to the New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show where we look at the latest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's get started with Bronco's 135th scale M19 multiple gun motor carriage. Built on the M24 light tank chassis, the M19 was an anti-aircraft platform mounting a pair of Bofors 40mm guns. It was built during World War II but entered service too late to see combat and production ended with just 285 units. However, the vehicles were deployed to Korea in 1950 where the heavy firepower turned out to be particularly effective against ground targets. Yeah, the Army liked it so much that when the M24 was withdrawn from service, the M19 turrets were mounted on its replacement, the M41, to produce the duster and nearly 3,700 of those M42s were produced. As far as we know, Bronco's kit marks the first M19 MGMC in 135th scale. Some of the parts are shared with the manufacturer's chaffees, including optional individual link T72 and T85 E1 tracks. As well as road wheels with separate rims and tires, one-piece idlers, and the rest of the running gear, including drive sprockets, torsion bars, and road wheel arms, shock absorbers, and return rollers. These items are designed to be workable. The torsion bars are kept in place with torsion bar tunnels. The M24 lower hull, marked by panel outlines, weld seams, and suspension attachments, has a cut down upper edge and a slightly different layout for the road wheel mounts. The one piece upper hull reflects the engine moved to the middle with the turret at the back. The molding of the surface detail throughout is first rate, with fine bolts and rivets, sharp panel lines, and thin louvers. Speaking of thin, check out the edges of the separate fenders, optional side skirts, and the engine grill insert. The main part of the turret is molded as a single part with fine holes in the floor and braces underneath, and detailed thin-walled fighting compartment. That characteristic scale gauge carries to the curved gun shield extensions. Ammo boxes ring the turret with a floor and individual bodies and lids and communal backs. Slide molded gun barrels, including two spares that attach to the engine deck, attach to slide molded receivers. The rest of the turret detail includes recuperators, supports, elevation and traverse controls, sights, seats, and radios. Clear parts supply periscopes, vision blocks, and lights. Footwitch Brass delivers engine screens, headlight and periscope guards, braces and brackets, and gun sights. Decals provide markings for four American M19A1s, two in Korea in 1951, one in Germany in 1954, and the other in a winter Murdoch scheme. Although not widely produced, the M19 is an important vehicle. It's a stepping stone to the duster. Bronco's done a great job here. Here's another interesting subject from Azure Fram, a 172nd scale Renard R31. You're forgiven if you aren't familiar with this recon aircraft. Only 34 were produced, but it was the only Belgian aircraft to fly combat missions during the German invasion in 1940. Graceful to look at, the R31 is relatively simple, an attribute reflected in its low parts count. Typical of special hobby produced kits, the surface detail is fine and sharply molded. That includes the texture on the fabric on the rear fuselage. Inside, framing graces the sides. The rest of the fuselage comprises a floor, seats, control sticks, pedals, and instrument panels with recessed dials. The parasol wing is molded in upper and lower halves with slightly raised ribs and a little dihedral. The stabilizers and rudder look similar. Big sturdy struts hold the wings and stabs in place. The distinctive underside intake comes in three parts and the landing gear legs are very sturdy and end with solid wheels. Two tiny windshields come on the clear sprue and a small photo etch fret supplies seat belts, steps, gun sight, and aileron actuator rods. Decals and painting diagrams show three Belgian aircraft, two during the war, and the other a pre-war trainer. The Renard is an attractive 1930s airplane that will add a different touch of color to any display. And the kit looks like a straightforward build. Next, here's Tacom's 135th scale M60A1. This kit follows from Tacom's Taiwanese CM11, which shares the M60 hull, but represents the U.S. Marine tanks used during Desert Storm with explosive reactive armor. Many of the parts are common to the CM11, including the lower hull with cast texture molded over the surfaces, along with road wheel attachments, weld seams, and inspection hatches. Also borrowed from the prior kits are the upper hull with the driver's hatch, cast texture on the glacis plate, and the engine cover, the scale fin fenders, stowage boxes, and the engine doors, the running gear with multi-part road wheels, sprockets with lightning holes, return rollers, and one piece but well-molded vinyl tracks. The new parts start with the turret, which has cast texture on the upper and lower halves, 
the commander's cupola, and hatches. The main gun is a single part with slide molded open muzzle and the accordion fold base of the mantlet dust cover and a separate fume extractor. The rest of the mantlet dust cover is molded in solid plastic with folds and creases. Turret details include smoke launchers, siding optics, commander's cupola machine gun, and dust cover. The bustle rack comprises supports and fine rails. Photo etch mesh lines the rack and there's a plastic form to shape the side mesh. Jerry cans and a spare road wheel dresses up the exterior of the rack. The rest of the parts account for the explosive reactive armor with attachments and supports. Large blocks clad the turret. Clear parts supply lights and periscopes. Decals provide markings for four USMC tanks in Desert Storm in 1991. All are painted in sand camouflage with names on the gun barrels. Based on how the CM11 went together when Tom Fody built it for the review, I bet this will be a fun project. Finally, let's take a quick look at Zvezda's 1144 scale A-50 mainstay, a Russian airborne early warning and control aircraft. Just as the real A-50 is based on the IL-76 transport, Zvezda's mainstay is based on the company's terrific IL-76 kit. Including the sharply molded upper and lower wings with fine panel lines, poseable control surfaces and cockpit, movable horizontal stabilizer, nicely detailed engines, and landing gear and optional flap actuator tracks. Among the new parts are the fuselage halves with solid noses and tails in place of the glass sections of the transport kit. In addition, the landing gear fairings are different and the rear fuselage is solid, unlike the option to pose the ramp open on the transport. The most obvious external difference is the radar dish that mounts to pylons on the rear fuselage, some vents, a refueling probe, and winglets that attach to the landing gear fairings. Clear parts provide a windshield and lights. Decals and color diagrams give markings for two Russian AWACS aircraft, including stencils and sensors. Zvezda's 1 to 144 scale airliners build easily, and this will likely follow in the same path. Yeah, nice kit. Look for reviews of the M19 and M60 in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the October issue on sale now. Yeah, thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. However, the vehicles were deployed to Korea in 1950, where the heavy firepower turned out to be particularly effective <laughs> against ground targets. In fact, the Army liked it so much that when the uh, M24 was withdrawn from service, the M19 turret was mounted on the M41, its replacement, to produce the duster. Nearly 3,700 of those M42s were produced. <laughs>